This is Taylor Martin and Kelly Johnson, writers of episode 621, Anna McMahon. You're listening to The Blacklist Exposed on Golden Spiral Media. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from getting a can of pepper spray in the face. Welcome to the award-winning The Blacklist Exposed podcast. I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. And I'm Agent Aaron Peterson. My safe word is dossier, and I'm offering a deep-fried pocket of heaven for your thoughts. Thanks for joining once again as we discuss number 60 on The Blacklist this week, Anna McMahon, written by Taylor Martin and Kelly Johnson, and directed by Michael Caracciolo. Show notes to the top for this episode of The Blacklist Exposed can be found at theblacklistexposed.com. On this episode, we'll cover off on the profiling question from last week with thoughts from all of you. Dig deep into this week's case profile, then hear thoughts from all of you on what you thought of Anna McMahon. Remember, if you are loving the show, go over to Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash the blacklist GSM and help us support the show by throwing a few bucks our way and fill the fedora because it's fun. And we just appreciate everyone out there that's doing that thus far this season. And the question from last week is, will they find the dossier? What is a dossier, you ask? Well, it's the word that's mentioned about 417 times in this week's episode, and it happens to have all the information on the plan. Except for people now, like Cooper, who t- speak in plain English, like the flash drive. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was funny because so many people are yelling dossier. I'm like, that's not what you'd say in that situation. You'd say flash drive. Cooper, Cooper's the only one that got it right. Uh, so far. Oh, so anyway, ninety nine percent of you said yes. <laughs> uh, well, we have it, it comments. Was, it was these? a valid question because you, the funny thing is that ninety nine percent of the people said yes, but ninety nine percent of the people also complained in this episode of how the hell do they have a photo of of the of uh, Basham Moreau dropping the thing yeah. into the kid's backpack? So it's like, that c- cake and eat it too here, people. Cake and eat it that, too. That was my favorite part. I'm like, no, I think we talked about this last week though. Math doesn't add up there. How does anybody know that? I didn't see. And there definitely wasn't a camera directly in front of them. <laughs> it was just kind of, all right, I guess we're going to swallow some uh, swallow some logic on this one. That's fine. TV logic. TV logic. So, But Caroline Steele said, just for fun, I will also add that Aram will find the dossier or a veterinary surgeon. Okay. Uh, Monica Stolfa, a few more. Monica Stolfa added, Aram will find it using the street surveillance footage and his handy laptop. Well, it seems like that were the case and it was at waist level because obviously there are cameras in the stop signs i guess i <laughs> i don't know i think this is going to be one that's beaten to dead this week yep. uh julia said someone from the task force using a metal detector and a pair of gloves in the kid's backyard hashtag Ew. dog poop Ugh. lastly anita said maybe the usb pen drive is not the only way to get it Dembe could have gotten info by traveling to Cairo, meaning the man from Cairo, who shed some light. Eh, would have been an interesting twist, but nope, it was a flash drive. Would have been a way for Dembe to come back into the equation. And probably more believable. <laughs> well, here's next week's profiling question. And this is actually a very fascinating one. How can POTUS, that's the President of the United States of America, kill POTUS? What? How's he going to kill himself? Why is he going to kill himself? What is going on with this plan? Do you think it's an interesting plan? It's definitely unexpected. I did not see that coming. I mean, I kind of had a... On second on second watch, we should have been completely tipped by the conversation between the First Lady and him, though. Well, but, the, the uh, fact that the First Lady was like, if you don't kill yourself, I will. <laughs> yeah, if you don't do it, I'm going to do it. Yeah, that was... Just, uh, on rewatch, I'm like, oh, she meant that. She's, she's mean. <laughs> she's a mean lady. But yeah, no, I'm kind of, I was taken aback by that because I don't understand how that's going to be helpful unless we have a vice president that, I don't know. I mean, he took money, so he owes people and I'm sure this is the only way he's going to get out. Maybe he's dying. I don't know. What Did you think it was a good plan? Unless uh, Diaz has a twin. <laughs> God, no, no, no. <laughs> that's what is the Aaron's reaction. Oh, yeah, it was sadness. Think. It was a whole lot of sadness followed by anger. Oh my <clears throat> all right. Well, thanks for all that answered this week. Now, before I have a gin work on my sinusitis, let's dig into this week's case profile. When he said gin, did you flash back to earlier seasons and go, did they get out? 
that that lady get out of jail? I was trying to figure that out. Is that, I know she was about making your fantasies come true, and he seems like he's in a pretty good state right now. So maybe this is the same person. But that's kind of what I was wondering. I'm like, I didn't know, man. They're bringing it back. All right, cool. I like that character. All right. Well, Anna McMahon. We open with the Grimm family getting ready to have a nice normal day when the Secret Service shows up, led by Mister Sandquist. You you just know things are going to go south. You can say there might be a little grim. No, dad joke. No. Uh, All right. That's kind of funny, though. That's kind of funny. <laughs> I'll give you that one. So John Grimm gave the drive to a buddy to decrypt, which Grimm's wife leads the Secret Service to. They end up torturing this friend and then kill him. You know this because the the one Secret Service dude takes forever to put on his gloves to emphasize, I'm going to kill him in a second. He had to make sure and stretch him out, get the fingers waving, that whole thing. Had that going on. I find it funny, though, that in order to kill a person, you have to put on a pair of latex gloves. But if you just want to completely gouge out some dude's eye, you have no <laughs> hand protection whatsoever. <laughs> we don't care about fingerprints then. We only care about it now. Oh, TV. That all leads to a chase to find the drive. And once the task force finds it, it's a race on the clock as our heroes save the wife and child and dad gets caught up. After trying to mail it to the Washington Post, he finds it, stores it until we can get to Liz before he dies. There's this this whole thing. I mean, a lot of this episode, and then uh, Liz and Wrestler break in and, and kill Secret Service agents, several of them. This whole episode was very much just a chase episode and really felt like set up for the finale. Would you agree with me on that? Yes, I would agree that it's uh, uh, setting the stages. I almost feel like... This should have been aired as a two-hour episode because it felt incomplete. Yeah, me too. Uh, that's exactly what I thought when it came to it. And I'm like, oh, this... I mean, don't get me wrong. I really like the ending, especially. I thought it was a cool twist. I just felt like that. this is a this should be a two-hour finale. This should be tied together. Yeah, it, it, they almost could have separated Brockton, College Killer, and Rasviet and pushed this and then made this a two-hour next week and still would have had your three episodes for sweeps. But maybe the last week's episode wasn't really sweep-worthy. Mm. Does, well, I guess that's... Do sweeps even matter anymore? <laughs> that's really the question. Is it really a thing still? Apparently. That's why they wanted to have three episodes in May instead of just ending it two weeks ago. Or, or ending even... it this week like they were originally supposed to. Man, to me, sweeps and the Nielsen ratings are two things that are archaic at this point. I mean, with the way modern television works now and how we, you know, nobody watches anything the day of. Hell, people don't even watch it till months later. And maybe they don't even watch it until it streams somewhere that the world has changed. And I feel like there are a couple systems that have not evolved with it. Yeah. For instance, we recorded this early Saturday morning and I watched it 45 minutes before we recorded. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's technology for you. No, I did mm. watch it twice. I'm kidding. <laughs> but still I could have done that if I wanted to. Hey, I've done it before. Yeah. Shh, don't tell anyone. All right, the flash drive, hey, time, time gets tight on the weekends, man. What are you going to do? The flash drive is decoded, and we learn the plan, assassinate the president, and that he's in on it. What? Say what? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I, I, the whole task force did the same way. It's like, huh? And then the thing that was really, I don't know if it's frustrating or just, like, at, after this point, does this, like, surprise anybody? Like, hey, we have at least Liz and Wrestler. We have a guy who can change people into other people. We have the alchemist who can change DNA. We have da 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 that can change this and someone can change this. It's like there could be just another guy out there who looks like the president killing the president. And if it's a whole plan, maybe there's like a stand in guy who just goes out there that looks like the president. And then Diaz isn't even on the podium during the debate. It's actually the stand in guy. Why? Why would you think that? And you think they're trying to escape from something? Is that what your theory is here? Yeah. I mean, it was very logical in what Red said. Like, he took money from the Russian oligarchs. So maybe he has to get out from under that. And the only way that that can happen is for, you know, him to, you know, kill himself and get out from under that and go hide in Tahiti with Marvin Gerard and all that other fun stuff. Um, the only part of the whole plan that just seems weird is the first lady. I don't understand how she fits in. Like, it, well, it would seem like the first lady would want to become president because the president gets killed. And that's the only thing I can think of is that Diaz doesn't know that he's the target. Well, well, he knows there's a plan. He obviously knows there's a plan. Right. He just doesn't know the end of the plan. No, I think he knows the end of the plan. I think he knows the whole thing because she that conversation with him and the first lady. And you're making a whole lot of assumptions. We don't oh, yeah, yeah. know any, any of that. We don't know any of that, what you said. 
Uh, that's just that's just your your personal um, opinion. Yeah, I don't have I'm just an trying opinion. to work through that whole question. Like, how does POTUS kill POTUS? <laughs> does and one of the logical places you would jump is that POTUS doesn't know. And him dying isn't going to make her president. She'd still have to go run. So nope. that wouldn't really. But she help. could manipulate and guide, and you know, Eleanor Roosevelt the whole thing, and she still has to run and win. She can't just become president. The vice president takes over. And after that, there's a whole succession chain and she's not part of it. But she could pull the vice president's chain and tell him what to do. And <laughs> Maybe she could probably pull her husband's chain. I mean, we're who married. She, who says it's she not isn't hard. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't know. It's a, it's a, I will give them credit. That's a fascinating plan because it never occurred to me. I'm sitting here thinking about wh- what do they want to do? How does it tie into the third estate? What, you know, all this other stuff. And here we have the president's going to kill the president. Like what? And it really ties into Katarina's plight, huh? At the end there, kind of ties in. Somebody wanting to take themselves out because of the heavy burden and whatnot. That was pretty interesting. Well, that's the assumption that they're making right now. Like they, like I said, Diaz, oh, they said it. Diaz may they not want to take it. out himself. Maybe <laughs> Diaz doesn't want to kill himself. True. I mean, I don't know if they're... I mean, yes, Red is assuming, I guess. But it definitely the themes tie in together. For sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so here's kind of the plan. Uh, During the debates, the president will kill the president. The third estate will be there. They'll be the patsy. Well, they they would have because now the task force ruined that. So now that they know that Red and the task force know, McMahon decides to use Red and frame him. And more importantly, the task force themselves because they did kill some secret agents earlier, which I knew was going to come back to bite somebody in the ass. You can't just kill a secret service and just walk out. Plus, they were going through mail, which is a federal crime. So good luck. Well, they weren't going through the mail. They only cleaned up the mail after they found the mail siphoned through already. Well, that footage is going to be gone. It's going to be just seen as them going through it. Secret Service coming in to try to save Grimm, and then they kill all of those people. That's the way I'm assuming they're going to paint it. Yes. It all depends on perspective as you watch it back. You know what's fascinating is once they paint that picture in the public eye, it's going to stay there. Oh, absolutely. The the public does not forget. Mm Mm-mm. I mean, just because you write something on Twitter and then delete it later doesn't mean the public doesn't know. Exactly right, Constance Wu. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Such real, a funny Real-time story. news on the blacklist exposed. <laughs> Such a funny story. Google that. Constance Wu on Twitter. It's fa- the, the, uh, the retraction is amazing. All right, so let's move on to uh, characters. Characters this week always starts with music. As we meet the Grimm family, we are treated to an eerie piano piece called A Thousand Cracks from the artist Lambert, or Lambert, depending on if you want to be French or not, on the Sweet Apocalypse album. So check out that album. It's actually really great. I listened to it this morning. Later, when Aram picks up Anna's call to the president after putting the post office on hold, we hear another piano piece called Insight 14. It's actually XIV. Is how you search for it, and it's by Julien Marshall. As always, you can find the playlists on our website at theblacklistexposed.com, one for Spotify, one for Apple. Uh, whichever one you choose, go ahead and click that link, and it'll take you over to all the great music from the show. Uh, and also, we should preface before we go, go on, next week will possibly be a little different. We don't know yet. Uh, depending on when we get a chance to see the finale, I don't know for sure when the episode's going to come out. There's a chance that the episode will either come out immediately after the finale or it won't come out till almost Tuesday. Yes, because I have, I go backpacking. It's my annual backpacking trip the weekend after Mother's Day. And that's just so happened to be when the finale falls. So people that are uh, fans of the show, just know, don't panic if the main show comes a little later. I think if if that is the case, you're going to try and do like an instant take kind of thing. Is that right? Yeah, we might do an instant take if uh, we don't get it early to watch uh, in advance. Right. So uh, just keep a, keep an ear out for next week or keep an ear out on Twitter or Facebook group. We'll keep you updated. But it's really, it's all my fault. Is, it, is no, what no, I'm no, saying. no, no. This is not Aaron's fault. Aaron scheduled this vacation well in advance, knowing when the potential finale was going to <laughs> land. And then they had to take that extra week off in March and push the schedule a week. Yeah. All right. It's not my fault. I was just trying to be nice. But yeah, it's not my fault, man. I played this a long time ago. <laughs> Based on incredible intel. Damn it, NBC. Damn it. All right, so let's move on. Well, damn it. That's a good way to tie it in because this felt like an episode of 24. It absolutely felt like an episode of 24. Just missing the clock. Even got the shady president. Shady president. You got a, you got a Jack Bauer-like figure and wrestler. You got the driving music going on in the background. and Yeah. Okay, I, this, I have to point this out. 
Wrestler was awesome. Guy knows how to have a, a fun shootout. Liz apparently only brings one clip to a, to a, a day in the job. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to point that out. I was like, did she like? To, she didn't even shoot six shots. She only shot five. Yeah, I'm like that clip should have been probably. I'm I'm guessing 15 shots, but I could have the the wrong model of whatever gun she has. Definitely don't feel like she fired even close to that. Why are you out? Who are you shooting before you get to work? <laughs> And why don't you have a backup clip? We've seen TV. We know if you're going to have a shootout, odds are it's going to cost you at least three clips, right? Because nobody hits anything. You're all stormtroopers. And everybody complains that nobody ever runs out of bullets in a movie or a TV show. (laughs) Here she's like short from what she should have. Oh, no. Astute TV viewers will know that they you only run out when it's plot convenient. (laughs) (laughs) But I I did like the the action scenes here were, were a lot of fun. I'm just I'm just poking fun. But when she's like, I'm out. I'm like, what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> check check the glove compartment. I don't know. Yeah, she's right there. In the, she's on the passenger side of the car. It wouldn't have been that difficult to pop it open. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All right. The characters this week. No Dembe. Dembe gone. We still haven't seen Dembe in a couple weeks. People are freaking out. Uh, any theories as to Dembe? Is he going to come in like as a last minute save for something in the next episode, you think? Or just we're going to see him and he's off traveling the world he's in cairo or something um i don't know if we'll see him per se i think i think dembe comes back because something might happen to red as a result of all of this and then liz has to make the phone call to dembe to come back and be the savior hmm i'm gonna throw my theory out there dembe goes finds katarina the real katarina the one i believe is alive and not wearing a fedora uh and brings her back she could still wear a fedora, even if it's a different person. They are, I don't, they are kind of trendy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going with. There's my random pull out of the air theory. All right. So yeah, because Aram, if, he, if he truly knows the whole story, that's a, that's a great way to bring her back in. Like, Hey, I know where she is and yeah, we got to get red back on the right and straight and narrow. And if he is Ilya of all people, then Katarina could actually come back in and say, this is, it's kind of like when red came into Liz's life in the pilot, there was a catas- you know, a cataclysmic event Tom switching sides. That was the cause for red coming back out of the cold to begin with. So maybe this is the cataclysmic event that we have to save red soul. I, I only think that because, um, he said he was going to follow his own path and I know he really wants Liz to know the truth. So that's why I'm kind of leaning that way. That's a fun path to follow. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that won't cause any problem or friction whatsoever. If that were the case, I would, I would assume 7 million people are on that same path. <laughs> <laughs> hopeful. They're hopeful. <laughs> Aram is able to tap the phone and overhear the conversation between Diaz and McMahon. My favorite part of this is that everybody's debating who the guy is. What? It, it's the president. I mean, if anybody's voice you're going to recognize, it should be that dude. I, well, I thought that at first, too. And then I thought, well, maybe if it's, he said it's going through a burner. So maybe it has like a voice modulator built into it in order to mask the, the voice call. I mean, it was we were, from we, a burner. We were hearing it, Troy. We heard it through yeah. their thing. It didn't sound like the president initially. <laughs> sound like him to me, but whatever. It ends up saving Cooper because he's all ready to tell everything, and and it, he actually gets Cooper to to walk out for now. We got. Do we have to make a a comment on the fact that there's actually other people that work at the task force? <laughs> Here's this this. Yeah, random, who's this, this lady? Yeah, when <laughs> when did she show up? I was like, we're introducing new characters in season six. This is going to be fun. Is she like a regular next year? <laughs> She's she's probably you know new 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 uh, Saram <laughs> or Samar. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and, and the best part is, I hope that she doesn't actually work for Aram because she's all like, like, hey, buddy, get over here. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty funny. All of a sudden, see, it's very much like Twenty Four, where just characters pop up, and you're like, I didn't know you even worked there, man. I mean, when did you join? <laughs> oh my gosh. I thought it was just like four people ran the whole thing. And now we've got backup. We've got help. Who knew? All these people willing to break laws is a little crazy. I did like that conversation with him on the, the phone with the post office. It's like, no, 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 lady. I work for the FBI. Okay, no, no, now you have to wait on hold. <laughs> my uh, my favorite part, probably the episode, is where Aram was like, I feel terrible. I voted for him. <laughs> and that was a good I just line. thought that was like the very line. clever. Yeah, and he delivers it very, very well. All right, uh, track Mr. Sanquist, and that's how he leads Rustler and the team to the location, so that's how Rustler finds him. 
uh, I think it's about it for around this week. So he's, he's a little shocked that he's in, being in, in the proper way, and he's actually using it in in uh, common sense ways <laughs> in order to find people versus the dossier in a kid's backpack. What do you mean? What do you say? Well, he's just he's using like the GPS tracker, and he's using traffic oh. cams, and he's doing things that normal people would do to find stuff versus the <laughs> in the dossier in a kid's backpack. Well, he doesn't have access to stop sign cams right. and. Or tree cams, or uh, fence cams, or any any other cams that uh, obviously they have going for them. <laughs> I was waiting for like, I was waiting for a close in shot of him with his hand in the flash drive in the backpack. I was waiting for that. Oh, that's a great GoPro there. That's hidden up on that stop sign. Yeah. It's got 10x zoom. <laughs> Some dude was skydiving, and he had his camera pointing in that general direction. And thank God we had, you know, whatever the the main. Uh, Oh, what was that weapon called in um, that Will Smith movie? God, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, Enemy of the State. Enemy of the State. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> he, uh, he he does have a little bit of a shock that he's getting arrested at the end, which I found sad. I just found very sad because I, I don't think Aram thought it was possible that they would arrest him. Do you think Aram reacted the right way in character in that moment? Like, do you think he'd be staying silent and or do you think he'd be more talkative and like what's going on i don't understand like and then yeah. just start spilling the beans or he's a nervous talker so probably okay you i mean yeah i'm just so? curious like how that plays out when he's in holding <laughs> next week oh uh i think he'll try to be tough but i mean it's not like they're going to torture him he's under official arrest so he knows his rights he's not stupid uh did you see the secret service people torturing the other guy <laughs> i don't think these are normal secret secret service uh, people that aren't going to torture people <laughs> That's true. I, I'm I'm more that if, part works if we're for going me for consistency on the show. I'm just saying <laughs> that part works for me. Liz hanging out in the the back side and no one noticing her. That so much didn't. But <laughs> everything else worked for me. That yeah. was a total twenty four moment right there. <laughs> yes, it was. I'm like, why don't you just put her in the vent now or something? <laughs> I mean, she has to get out, go through the vent, something like that. Uh, that was kind of a shock because I'm pretty sure the only way in and out of that place is through that elevator, right? There aren't, I don't even know if there are stairs. I can't remember. No, there's the one back door that, uh, Donald let Liz get out of, uh, back That's right. in season three. That's right. Or end of season Good. two, end of season two. End of, end of season two, end of season two. All right. Speaking of Donald, let's, uh, let's talk about Russ. He didn't do a whole lot. He was Mr. Action guy this week. He beats a smack out of Mr. Grimm <laughs> when he breaks in the hotel room. I'm like, easy. This guy didn't do anything, man. He's trying to save the, the country. I mean, it's dark. It's hotel. You can understand. But it's like, do you think one punch could have knocked that guy out? <laughs> it wasn't like he was a, he was a fighter. <laughs> he was like a, 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 what, what was a salesperson trying to close a deal? I think mm-hmm. one smack from wrestler in the nose would have been enough to keep him down on the bed. <laughs> I personally loved the moment. I thought it was, I thought it was absolutely great. Because if I if I jumped in the dark and somebody attacked me, that's exactly what I would do. Keep it until I can make sure that they're down. And that's what he did. Go, Donald. You're a stud. Also, hair didn't move. Wait, wait, wait. People, I actually started getting um, messages from people saying, "Hey, why do you guys keep making fun of Donald's hair? You just now catching up? <laughs> it's been that way since season one. <laughs> Where you been?" <laughs> Sorry you're a late joiner, but uh, that's a thing. There used to be a drinking game for every time that wrestler got punched in the face back in season one. Yeah, until I got kidney problems, and I said, okay, I got to stop there. Liver, one of those. Both of them. Kidney and liver. They both stopped. That's right. All right. So he beats up Mr. Grimm, kills a couple Secret Service men. Basically, he's the reason why the post office is going to be under arrest for killing people. Right. And he was he was Jack Bauer without uh, without going full Bauer. Without the without the the voice, yeah, he doesn't. I mean, Diego does a, a nice job, but he's not quite. He's not quite Kiefer level. So, Although I am hopeful, Troy, very very hopeful that next week, because he's pissed at this point. A, you challenge his honor. B, you're you're the one breaking the law. I'm hoping he does go full Bauer on people. Well, I was just waiting for him to be like, "Damn it, don't get in that car, Mister Grimm." <laughs> Damn it, Chloe. Oh, wrong show. Sorry. All right, Diaz. He We find out he definitely knows the plot. Tells McMahon to handle it or heads will roll. So he's in a hurry to die for some reason, for some cause or some circumstance we have no idea about right now. It's funny that he's like, heads will roll. It's like, yeah, yours. 
Yeah, technically. I mean, handle it so I can... Which, I which, which makes me believe that he doesn't know the end state of the plan. You know, it's very, it's very possible he doesn't know the final result. But based on that conversation with his wife, the first lady, I feel like he does. Now, let's talk about that because you really were intrigued by the first lady. Why were you intrigued by her? Well, because there was a comment made you know, a few weeks ago when she's like, yeah, how's the first... You know, Anna McMahon is asking about the first lady. Like, mm-hmm. How's the first lady? Say goodnight to her. So it appears that Anna McMahon and the first lady might have more of a relationship um, than we prob- previously had known. And so now that we actually get introduced to the first lady out of nowhere, that the first lady clearly is the one that's probably the mastermind, in my opinion, to this plot. Like there's something she's doing in order to kind of orchestrate it because she seemed like she had very command of the room and she knew what she was saying and she walked out and totally went out. Like who does that? Like the first lady goes into that press conference and just takes the podium without her husband. Like you would think that she would wait behind until the president was ready to go because the president would come in first. So they're clearly establishing that she's running the show, not him. Yeah, that was a surprise. I've never seen that in political office, which makes me wonder what who she is, what her power is, what her role in everything is. Yeah, she's she's she's, she's fascinating and interesting. I, I hope there's yeah. more of her arc next week. Definitely more to her than just a first lady. Yes. Yeah. So I'm um, kind of curious where are we where are we going with this. And I will say, you know, a lot of times when we watch this stuff and we get these plans, it's pretty easy to put it together like where it's going. I legitimately have no idea at this point where we are headed. And I think the one thing that makes us wonder why POTUS can kill POTUS and why we think that maybe Diaz isn't in on the whole thing, it goes back to the whole concept of the show, right? Relax, you know, let me, let me tell you, I'm, I'm not telling you everything, right, is what Red says. Uh, there's a lot of misdirection. There's a lot of, you know, half-truths that aren't lies. They're half-truths. Mm-hmm. Um, so in this regard, this could be a... Yeah, we have this grand plan to you know reset the government or whatever it is that Diaz is in on, but he doesn't know the last piece of the puzzle. He's been kept out of the dark from that, very potentially. I like that idea. I like that concept. Like he doesn't he doesn't know. Wait, the whole plan is to kill me? What? This plan sucks. I <laughs> want out. Yeah, it'd be fascinating to find out exactly where that's going. Or you could go the other way in the show because we've had the you know what do you, foundational work of you know. DNA changing and twins and and other options and facial reconstruction and all of that stuff that there could be two Diaz's at the end of the day. I'm sure I'm sure in your head that's exactly what it is. Yep. <laughs> well, Basher Moreau did it just this season, right? Where he was that uh, the the security guard and he mm-hmm. literally made himself to look like the security guard. I don't know why he picks just such a, a low level random dude, but that's what he wanted to do. So we have hey, pre- precedent for it in this season. Security guard is an important job. I personally don't think that's the case. I, I feel like that's just, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess it's possible, but I don't think that's what it is. I think they want him dead for a specific reason, and it's going to bring about, I, they hinted at civil war and causes of civil war. The idea that if he kills himself or fakes his own death or whatever, then it will spark a civil war in the country, maybe between the 99% and the 1% or something like that. But it also tied into the Prince of Initiative again. I love how Red was like, yeah, the Prince of Initiative, like it was the whole catalyst for World War One. I. I was like, thanks, Red. We covered that six weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> we'll recap it real quick. Yeah. So the Prince of Initiative is the the guy. Princip is the guy who shot Archduke Ferdinand to basically set off the catalyst for World War One. So this seemed like it was more of a plot to pit country against country versus within country. As Aaron was saying with the Civil War, I'm thinking this is more like a something happens and they blame it on Russia, which was kind of the same thing that was happening at the end of season two, if you remember with the whole Aria bombing. So they were trying to say, you know, r- incite a war between Russia and the United States. That was the cabal's plan. So this seems like it could be another type of cabal to make that happen still and move forward with that timetable with the war in 2017. It got derailed. Maybe this is the resurrection of that plan. Yeah, I'm I'm probably still hung up on that third estate trying to trying to connect that. You're it is World War One and Civil War. You're right. Um, I guess that makes more sense. And the cabal leading that direction would make even more sense. So yeah, I can see that. I mean, Russia's becoming more of a superpower. It could be Russia trying to force its hand so that they can go head to head. Yeah, and if there's still Katarina in the background, if she's still out there, you got those people that were following wrestler that were look like KGB type people. 
or at least Russians that were working for somebody. So there, there, there's still a lot of open tie-in, and, and I can't imagine that we would have just dropped the cabal and pitting countries against each other in order to advance a superpower uh, estate, you know, a, you know, a secret club estate. I don't think that that's something that would just die because no, the director died. I think that's these guys were all hiding in the shadows working up a new plan. This is yeah. the new plan. Me either. All right, Cooper, let's move on to Harold Cooper, who finally gets some stuff to do this week. He tells McMahon the truth about what they know. I'm kind of curious because this is a moment where I was a little bit surprised and taken aback. Was that a bad call on his part, in your opinion? I was trying to play through that in my head. Would I have actually tipped my hand? Because I, I like the back and forth between Cooper and McMahon when he was like, yeah, I'll tell you. Sure, I'll play along. I'll do it. He, he seemed like he, very cat and mouse. I really like the dynamic between the two of them in that regard. In this situation, you know, saying that we know that you're part of a plot without having the evidence in hand, I think that that was an overstep because you have to, you could do that if you had the evidence already. If you already had the dossier, then I would say it was a perfectly fine. But because it didn't have the dossier, I think it was an overstep. Hmm. I, I appreciate his boldness. Um, and I was, I was shocked. It was definitely a shocking moment because I'm like, oh, he's, he's really telling her the truth. Uh, but I thought it was a bad idea on his part. You're, you're basically, you're, you're pointing your finger, you're waving at the dog or whatever. And, um, mm, that, that's what gets you bit, you know? So I, I didn't, I didn't think it was a smart play. I get why he was doing it, but I didn't think it was a smart play at all. And he's putting his people in trouble in, 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 in harm's way because now that she knows that they know there's like this, this greater race to get to the end and what, you know, what ends justify the means in order to get the dossier first. There's always a difference. And this, this goes to the show itself. I mean, look at, look at all everyone's theories on who red is. Everyone has a theory, right? Um, there's always a difference between thinking something and knowing something. And once you know something, then it becomes concrete information. When you just think it, it's just it's just an idea. Now she knows it. She absolutely knows that he knows. And now she has to formulate a plan to shut him down. She like so the whole time after he after that moment, she's already trying to think of a way to shut him down. Because the old adage is what knowledge is knowledge is power. Power. Oh, I'm sorry, you were doing it for more of emphasis. You want to try it again? Let's try it again. Come on. No, I, 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 you could, I was waiting for you to finish it too. No, but it, that it works both ways. That moment of hesitation was great. I mean, like that was much more powerful. So I, I ruined it. Well, there were two powers. That's power squared. That's even more powerful. <laughs> Anyways, I don't even know what just happened. All right. So he, he does learn firsthand that Diaz is involved because he's hanging out there. And thankfully, Diaz makes sure to open the door randomly when he's not talking and then close it when he's talking again. That helps him. Because he couldn't hear the voice, apparently. Red thanks him for saving him. That's a very nice moment. I, I like this moment quite a bit. And he does mention friend, which actually makes Cooper take take pause, I think. Yeah, Did you notice that? Weren't they friends already? <laughs> Didn't they work together? Weren't they buddies from Kuwait and all this other stuff that was happening? No, but now I, you're my friend? I I don't think that was the case. He just, he, I, he was, I think, surprised to see that Red was acknowledging that it was an act of friendship versus him doing his job. That's what I took from it. But of course you took something else from it. I didn't take anything from it. It's just, <laughs> just like, Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah. He, he already kind of said this before when he was talking to him after red was almost killed on death row. Yeah. But it's still a nice moment and they're reiterating it, which means I feel like they're trying to remind us of it for a reason. Sure. Mm. Maybe he's going to jump, jump in front of a bullet for Cooper or something. I don't know. All right, so he's intent on saving the president from himself, which I find interesting. Even though he knows the man is going to launch a plot to kill himself, he's not going to let that happen because that's not what Harold Cooper does. Kind of all of his problems might be solved if he just lets this happen. But then again, we don't know what the full scope of the plot is. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see the plot. That's really the, the big thing. I, I want to see how this actually unravels. <laughs> I'm like, popcorn, All right. I'm like popcorn bucket in hand going like, yeah, I have no idea where this is going for the first time in the show. Speaking of the plot thickening, Anna McMahon. Okay. I do have to say this for being a blacklister. I, she wasn't, it wasn't really focused on her so much as the dossier. They should have called this, uh, the dossier. Did that bother you at all? No, I don't think so. Because I think at the end of the whole situation, 
She's still commanding the Secret Service agents. She's still informing Diaz. She's still making sure that everything stays on track. I would have liked to have seen, and maybe this tips the hand, and that's why they didn't do it, but I would have liked to have seen a conversation between the First Lady and Anna McMahon in, a title, in an episode titled Anna McMahon if the First Lady is in on it. Um, but the fact that she was able to co- concoct the whole, you know, we're arresting the task force at the end and we're charging you guys with treason for a plot against the president. I thought that was a cool way to use the information to spin it another way, which makes her, I think, blacklister worthy at that point. Okay. Uh, just kind of curious, you know, it was just, I, I guess we can add her to the list of blacklisters who actually don't get caught at the end of the episode. Yeah. But she probably will next week. Hopefully. <laughs> That would be that would be quite a twist, right? If the the plot goes through and Anna McMahon gets away with it, mm. well, you could just arrest him and put him in jail. They don't have to die. <laughs> Man, you're dealing with the president. That's a lot more complicated than 24 made it look. Right. <laughs> you can't just kidnap on a on a plane and make him confess, and all's good. You need a lot more than that, even in TV. So it'll be interesting to see. I I really feel like Diaz is probably going to have to die in order for something to happen. And I think that's the interesting thing that I'm excited for is to find out, let's say that they figure out the plan, they stop the plan or they do whatever and Diaz dies anyway. So then the plan almost gets enacted by, you know, circumstance of just being there. Mm -hmm. Like they, they almost caused the plan to happen. I I think that would be an interesting way to proceed into season seven because then you have to deal with what's the fallout of that happening. Wouldn't it be fun? This is just my opinion. Wouldn't it be fun if the task force actually is on the run next year like the whole task force they have to kind of like use their wits to survive for a few months or something like they have to go underground and prove their innocence i mean they, they kind of did that when they were looking for Karakurt in a way um so i don't know if that's like retreading but if it were all together as a team then that would that's be what I something mean. different so yeah, i think that would be interesting I think if they were to like hook up with uh, like Tadashi or some of those guys that have uh, information gathering intel capability and they work at like a secret clubhouse location and work out of there, I think that would be mm-hmm. fun versus truly being on the run run. But yeah, if they used, if they leveraged Red's assets from the syndicate in order to keep their operation going, I think that would be an interesting season or at least half season until they get back to the post office at you know nine or ten. Right. But by the end, they hatch a plan to take down Reddington and frame him. That was Anna McMahon's plan. Obviously, hedges a bet by convincing Sanquist to not tell Diaz about the dossier. So she did manage to make that happen. And Sanquist followed suit. So I, I do agree. There's a little... It's definitely not Diaz's plan. Whatever it is, I don't think it's his plan. He's just going along with it. And I also think that it's funny that they're trying to frame Reddington. Didn't they do that once before? Back in 1990? <laughs> And how did that go last time? Yeah, yeah, I I do believe that this is what they're, she's trying to do and frame him. But, you know, I mean, he's already the most wanted criminal. I guess that would make him more wanted. But I don't know how much more. That would probably add to his notoriety, honestly. For sure. Uh, but by the end, she frames the task force with Dr. Footage and Cooper and the team are going down. Everybody but Liz is caught. Dun, dun, dun. So if he's more wanted, does that mean we like retire number one on the Federal Bureau's most wanted list? Like nobody else can hold number one because Reddington will always hold number one. I mean, if if he's can if they think he killed the president, definitely right until yeah. he's caught. I I hope that doesn't happen because I feel like that's that then you run the risk of making it hard for me to justify why nobody's turning him in when he's walking around br- on the street randomly, like a random number one because I don't know who's on the top ten. I don't know that. I mean, they never, it's not like they run that foot, footage every day or something. And nobody goes to the post office anymore because nobody mails anything. We all use UPS or Amazon. Come on. So, or email. But you kill the president, there's going to be nonstop coverage. It's going to be everywhere and it's never going to stop until he's caught. There's no way he can just walk down the street and have a, you know, delightful Danish anymore. Well, he does have three names to his name, right? He's Raymond Red Reddington. It doesn't matter, 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 because he's still going to be on every TV screen and people pay attention to their TV and their mobile screens. No, I'm just saying people that shoot presidents have three names. John Wilkes (laughs) Booth, Lee Harvey Oswald, Raymond Red Reddington. Touche. Touche. All right. So Liz, we move on to Liz. Uh, Thinks Katerina is the devil. Mm. But Red doesn't think Katerina is the devil. Interesting. Interesting. Do you think Katerina is the devil? I don't think Katerina is the devil. No? 
I think she's a KGB agent doing her job and she's a mother that loves her child and she'll do anything in order to make sure her daughter is safe and that she knows that she didn't betray her country and she has to prove that some way, somehow. Well, she kind of did betray her country, right? By being a member of the cabal. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, you just said she didn't, but she did. Well, yeah. Speculation. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really betraying your country? Could you be working for the cabal for your country? You sound like a spy right now. You're like, no, I didn't. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. No, I didn't. But you're having that conversation with yourself. I'm adding to Twitter and removing from Twitter and adding to Twitter. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Woo flashback. When there's the shootout, Liz is out of bullets. We already talked about that, but I'm going to bring it up again because that was funny. (laughs) What? (laughs) Uh, Did you you laugh? Because I laughed. I laughed out loud. Yeah, I did. I did. In fact, my my wife who watched it with me uh, jumped off the couch and said, "Why is she out?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I got a feeling this is going to be a uh, overall thing that people can agree on. Yeah, she should have had more bullets. And she, you know what? Lesson learned, Liz. I'm sure you learned a lesson from this. Right. Uh, she <laughs> or, or or she has to go back to asking more questions. Hey, wrestler, where are more bullets? <laughs> <laughs> where do we keep the clips do we keep them in the car and Russ is like yeah I just took them all with me I just assumed I was going to be doing most of the shooting because you're always running out so uh, it's funny funny the Agnes situation boy I do not understand fans anymore everybody's been yelling about where she doesn't even acknowledge Agnes. She didn't even acknowledge Agnes. Next last week, she acknowledges Agnes. And everybody's like, I don't want Agnes. <laughs> I don't want Agnes. What do you people want? <laughs> I can't keep up. Oh. Usa. Do think, anyway, do you think it was always part of the plan or do you think this was a cater to the fans? Do you, for Agnes being back in the show? Like, what do you think? My personal opinion? Yeah. I mean, it's just an opinion. I have no no idea. Uh, I would probably say because of when it happened in the season, because it took a, it takes a long time for them to catch up to where fans were because of how the late start and everything else in the season, I think this is just letting fans know, hey, we, we realize that Agnes is still part of the show. We were trying to make you sons of bitches happy <laughs> from last season, and we can't ever make you happy. But here, here's a little bit. We're going to acknowledge she's a mom. We're going to paint the picture of we're getting there. And obviously, they would never call you guys something. They're not calling anyone sons of bitch. That's just my word. Okay? Please don't hold them accountable for my stupidity. Uh, we're going to acknowledge Agnes. We're going to show Agnes. We're going to show that she has a plan. We're going to have Red say that it's okay. And then we're going to throw some things in the fire that make it not okay. That's what we're going to do. We're going to cover Agnes. We're going to acknowledge she's a mom. She's a good mom. The reasons why she's doing it. But we're going to make sure that she can't do it for the time being. Right, because now Liz is literally on the run. Right, right. And, you know, and she talks about, we we see Agnes last week. She's working through a transition. She talks about that this week, that she's working through a transition. I do feel like this is, I don't want to say fan service, because I feel like it, it's also in service of the story. You have to do it, really. So either, I mean, it needed to be done regardless. It doesn't matter the reasons. But probably they did it sooner just because of that, yeah. Okay. You you agree with that or no? I'm not sure if it was fan service or not, but they absolutely had to cover off of it in the story. Like you introduce the kid and then you're putting her with Scotty because you're trying to find Tom's killer. You found Tom's killer. Um, now when you, when are you going to go get your kid back? Yeah. At some point you need to, you need to pick that kid up. I mean, and at you, least and you could, and you could do the thing. Like I was going to go get my kid and then I'm like, Oh, I found out this new information that my dad's not my dad. And then, oh, I was going to go get my kid. And, oh, now my whole friends and family are kidnapped by these crazy people that are going to kill the president, killing himself. So I can't go get my kid. So you could keep doing that whole thing like she can't get to her kid because there's always something else. Mm. But I mean, it gets gets tiring after a while, but at least it's acknowledged that she's aware that there's a kid out there. You, You don't have to do that. All she really, I mean, you could cover this with dialogue. You really, really can. People like people didn't. I, I hope they didn't misunderstand. I don't think they did, but I hope they didn't misunderstand fan outrage over her not acknowledging Liz as her Agnes. Just, we want Agnes back on the show. I don't think any fan really wants Agnes in the show. Hell no. No. And it's nothing, nothing against that kid. Delightful, adorable child that they showed. It's just kids in the blacklist. I, you know, eh, it's not really why we watch the show. It's not that kind of show. And we don't really want to watch that kind of show. But, um, but when the show is about, <clears throat> a mother trying to do everything she can for her daughter. 
just acknowledge her. Yeah. That, that's literally a couple lines here and there. Every couple episodes where, you know, we went out, me, Agnes and I went out last night, or Agnes and I did this, or I picked Agnes up when we went here, or something like that. That's all you have to do, and I think fans would have been fine. Yeah, I took her to Grandpa's house, and he taught her piano. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what you did there. They worked on the Jeep Wagoneer together. Aw, uh, you know, just like my dad used to have. <laughs> okay, so no, it was it was just like dad used to have. Yeah, just like dad used to have. <laughs> right, that is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's yeah. a there's a loophole. My buddy Dennis still calls my mom his mom. Yep. Just letting you know that happened. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> it's not her son. But she raised him, kind of, so he always calls her mom. Whatever. Okay, so, <sighs> got that out. All right, uh, she gets back to the task force. McMahon is coming for them all, and it looks like Liz is going to escape because she says she can't just stand there while <laughs> she's literally just standing there. I can't just stand here. It's like, okay, well, then run. <laughs> You've been standing there for like eight minutes having a full-on conversation while they're 15 yards away. <laughs> I don't understand that. This is where, this is like, just, I just thought it was funny. I mean, yeah, by it, it's the 20, I love 24. 24 did this every other episode. So this is not a surprise to me. I gotta talk quietly because there's guys around the corner. <laughs> I don't think she was even talking quietly. Hey, Red! Red, I, you won't believe it! Anne McMahon is here! She's uh, she's over there, right like 20 yards away from me. They're taking a rum. Oh, my God, Red. They're taking a rum. I can't stand here. I cannot. <laughs> Sorry. Too much. No, I, I, I think that was your audition <laughs> tape for next season. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny. I, we're making a lot of fun, but seriously, I like the episode. I, I just thought that was funny because that was a 24 flashback. Totally. Big time. So she's obviously getting out of there, right? Because you have to have somebody who can who can do something on the outside. And Liz is the main character besides Red, so why wouldn't she be the one? And it's great because it pushes Liz and Red to have to work together again, even though Red's all like, I can't kill you. I don't like you. I don't trust you, but I can't kill you. So at least this makes them work together again, which is what the fans love. The fans love Liz and Red working together. Uh, can we speak to that real quick? It really feels like that is obviously okay now. It, it seemed like it by the end of the episode. Seemed like at the beginning of the episode. I mean, it, it when she shows up and she's like, "Can we do this like now?" Which I thought was great, by the way. Which <laughs> like I ain't got all day. Uh, the relationship seemed one hundred percent fine versus last week because of the "Can we do this now?" The the whole like quippiness of their relationship was back, and I'm like, yeah, that seemed like that was resolved pretty quickly. Yeah. So okay, I, I got I got news for you though. If you if you interrupt me during my massage like that, I will kill you. <laughs> Even if I can't kill you, I will kill you. I can promise you I'm not leaving. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could tell me the fate of the country is in your hands if you don't get up. And I'll be like, uh, I'm still in deep tissue, so it's going to have to wait. Plus, you can't sit up if you're doing deep tissue massage. Like, it takes a while to move again. Oh, man. I fall asleep. For sure. I do. I fall asleep every time. <sighs> I'm, I'm getting one today. Do you know that? That's that's what I'm doing after this. I'm getting I, a deep I'm, tissue I'm, massage. Well, then you should move on so you can get to it. <laughs> All right, good call. Thanks. <laughs> I could do another interpretation of Liz trapped in the the uh, task force. <laughs> Don't worry, wrestler. I'm coming back for you. <laughs> All right, Red. I need a gin in my life. I just want to say, I just need a gin in my life, not the old gin. This gin. This gin. And yeah, uh, less the killy kind. This man's a healer. He's got a lot of. A lot, of, a lot of heels. Uh, we, he uses his contacts here, Red does, to find out which hotel they are in. And we, and we see this gentleman that we've seen before, and he has to apologize to his harlot of a girlfriend. Yeah. Talk about, talk about casting. <laughs> like, yeah, she sleeps with everybody on the staff. Yeah, I felt bad for her. I'm like, I wonder if she knows what part she's playing. Oh, my gosh. And I was trying to remember who this guy was if we had ever met him before. I had a feeling it was the guy who uses the hotel maids and busboys and room you know room service type people. I thought that was I thought it was that guy. So when Brett actually said it, I was like, oh good, I feel like I was vindicated because I really <laughs> was trying to place this guy in a previous episode and I couldn't do it. We've well, seen him before. I know we've seen him before. I just couldn't remember where we saw him, like oh. which episode it was and I was trying to do all that in my head as the scene was processing, and I'm like, maybe this is the the, the hotel chain guy. 
who uses all of the hotel people to be spies for red. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, Hey, yeah, I need you to go look for the hotel people. And I'm like, Oh yes. Still got it. He had to apologize to his angel. <laughs> <laughs> like your angel sleeping with everybody. Maybe you need to get, get somebody with some different wings. Cause her wings are dirty. All right. Maybe you need to not but, call her angel and keep, you know, exasperating the problem. <laughs> Maybe be wow, a better, look at you. Be a better parent. Stop and enabling. Right. Don't say parent. Now you just mean <laughs> it weird. All right. Puts together that the president is in on it. It reminds everybody that, hey, I blackmailed him for like $300 million in camp- over camp- campaign contributions like three years ago. Remember? 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 Suckers? In the season this four? Guy, remember? Guy's dirty. You know, a lot of people I bet watching the show did not remember that. That's a, a very good possibility. Yeah. That was a long time ago. The casual years fans. Ago. The casual fans. Right. Uh, but he does. And in this episode, he says, your president again, mm-hmm. your president again. And what's funny is I really feel like people are starting to pick up on that. Just uh, now? I, yeah, I, I really. Well, I do think that there's people like casual fans that didn't notice that. And now I believe they notice that every time he does say it, because he always says your president. He never says mine. So you definitely know he's not American. Even though I think we've firmly established that. Well, are they only picking up on it now because they assume that this is Ilya and they know Ilya is Russian, so that's why they're picking up on it? Probably. Probably. I don't know. Right. I can't speak for the world. I mean, I will. If you want me to, I will. But no. Uh, and, he, and he says, hey, you remember when top secret documents were top secret that was to a funny Cooper? Line. I like that one. <laughs> that was really funny. Russian that whole exchange paper? was pretty funny. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Well, here's where we get to next. Basically, at the end of the episode, he has a wonderful little conversation with Liz, which I'm going to basically surmise and recap with you here now. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. And I'll, I'll go through it all, and then we'll discuss. Okay? Got it. That way, that way well, we're not cutting each other off off and right. Walls were closing in and prefers to go out as a martyr for his cause, like the president, and also he's paralleling that to Liz. Whatever it was he was carrying, a heavy burden people willing to kill themselves always are, burdens they can't even imagine casting off, which leads Liz to say, you talking about uh, me? Are you talking about the president or are you talking about my, my mama? Well, your mom wasn't as bad as you think she was. Young woman trying to make sense of a world that was falling apart around her. On one side of an unbridgeable divide, your father on the other, and you in between. Your mother has legend that has grown mythic. Spy, bloodless turncoat. Over the years, people forget the person behind the myth. If she were here, I'm sure she'd tell you, you uh, she, she made so many mistakes. She was scared and uncertain and just trying to do the best she could. Bring Agnes home, Elizabeth. Basically saying there isn't any risk. What did you take away from that exchange? Uh, well, the exchange is beautiful. I love the conversation. Well done. The, the, yep. the, the first thing that I took away from it was like, the, we don't even know the president is trying to kill himself. So this is a really interesting tie. So is this the is this the tip to the audience to say, hey, he's really going to kill himself. Like it is the POTUS killing the POTUS and POTUS is in on the plan and he knows everything. Is that the well, tip? All, all signs are pointing that way. So Right. Um, or is it the way we were talking about it where there could be a, a hundred different other scenarios? Um, so the, the tie of this conversation into the episode seemed a little bit loose in my opinion. Um, at the same time, I liked the, uh, the explanation. Like he, he didn't have to like tie it into the president. He could have just said, Hey, people that, you know, want to have their legacy and people that carry these heavy burdens that do end up committing suicide. He could have just talked in generalities and it probably would have worked a little bit better. But then, of course, the tying it into Katarina was the awesome part. And then you have the whole, whether you believe it's Ilya, whether you still believe it's Katarina, that that whole conversation still is written in a way that leaves both of those theories uh, ab- absolutely plausible. Like, if she uh, was you. here... To, y- you know, to but, you. But if she was here... <laughs> to you. But if she was... <laughs> to you. Because to me, she's not. So, you know. It's a lot of, a lot of personal context and conversation to not have lived it yourself. Just No, saying. it's not. No, it's not. That's how I would say it. That's how I would deliver it. Yeah, if she was here, that's what she'd say. I think. Because I want to reassure with my daughter. With the dramatic pauses in the right places? Because I'd want to reassure my daughter that everything's going to be okay. It's not or the daughter. person I feel is my daughter. Yeah, there you go. Be, be specific now. <laughs> I'm just, that, that's what I think. So, Like a daughter. Not his daughter. Like a daughter. That's how I see it. Yep. I mean, sure, I can see how you can take it that way, but there's a lot of different ways you can take things if you want to take them that way. I just... 
want to take them at face value. They keep dropping a lot of these lines like this in here, though, throughout the course of the show. You mean the season? Yeah, season, series, doesn't matter. Like, Red's always talking about, like, here's how Katarina would have felt in this situation. Here's how your mother would have reacted. Here's how your mother is, like, you know, trying to deal with all this grief and anguish. And Yeah, they're, they're definitely, which is funny, they've made a conscious effort this season to point out that Katarina most likely is alive somewhere. Yes. And that's what I take from this. You're taking it to mean, I'm talking about myself this whole time. To me, <laughs> to me, I'm taking it to mean she's out there somewhere. We're reminding the audience she's out there somewhere. And maybe we'll see you next week. Maybe. Or, or next season. One or two. We'll see her. I think we'll see her soon at some point. And honestly, here's, here's what I hope. Whatever, because it seems like there's a lot of infighting going on in groups and stuff right now over this whole thing. Right now? Has that been going on since like it, season two? No, it's been it's been really accelerated the last like several weeks. And and I, I feel like a lot of that is because it's been drawn out too long. Right. We've talked about that before. It's been drawn out too long. I'm really hoping whatever puts some of the theories just, just to bed so everybody can get back on the same page and enjoy the show like as it goes. You know what I mean? I, I just hope that the finale does something along those lines. That would be good. I also love good. the... Um Good for the fandom. The spoilers that were out there floating around, which I still have not yet seen. But I love the conversations when you're like just kind of scan across the group and you're like talking about the spoiler, how there's a lot of assumption in a lot of what they've seen on IMDb and a lot of assumption of what they've seen in video clips and a lot of assumption. It's not that there's anything definitive in these spoilers that are out there. We haven't seen anything yet. Right. So you don't know until you see it. When you see it, then we'll know. I mean, have, have you seen it? You said you got spoiled. Uh, I got spoiled by one one thing uh, because somebody. See, here's a. I have, man. Uh, <laughs> people suck. That's why. Uh, sometimes people want to want to automatically ruin other people's enjoyment, and they'll blatantly put up a, a. Like I don't care if you like put spoiler in comments, then put whatever it is in the comments. But if you put up something that hasn't aired yet. And it's from an upcoming episode and, you know, it kind of gives away like major plot points. That's, that's just a, it's a dick move. I'm sorry. You know, I, I got in a way to dance around that and somebody did that, but I don't know if it necessarily spoiled anything. Cause I don't know if that's true or not. So I, I have no idea, but if it ends up being true, then yeah, that person's kind of not nice. I just, I just love the, all the chatter. That's all like the chattering yeah. about something that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Well, here's the thing is like when if you if you put that out there in a Facebook group, like with 30,000 people, they don't have a chance to not see it. You know what I mean? If it already aired, hey, you you know better. You unfollow that group until you watch the episode or whatever. But if you're part of the fam community, you, you want to be part of the conversation of, for episodes you've already seen. So there's no reason for you to unfollow groups and all that kind of stuff. So if somebody puts in a spoiler from an episode that hasn't aired yet. People, I, I love the people that jump to their defense as if they they didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, you did. That's like you you obviously you're intentionally trying to ruin someone else's experience, and that's that's just not cool, man. It's just not cool. So if you have if you have these spoilers and and you're somebody that likes them, that's fine. If you like that stuff, I don't. That's awesome, man. Go hunt down whatever you want to hunt down. Just be respectful of the other people that don't feel the same way you do. That's all I'm saying. And when people blatantly put it up there where you can't avoid it like it just pops up on your screen and there's nothing you can do to get away from it and it hasn't aired yet that's not a cool thing yeah like when you come outside of the theater on a thursday night and you blurt oh, out what happened and then you get the crap kicked out of you in your foreign country which is a true well, I mean, story that happened yeah that did happen in the end game uh, violence is never an answer but no. you know maybe throw popcorn at him i would have been cool with that because <laughs> that guy's a douche or take Scott. Yeah, we have a friend Scott who like literally saturates his popcorn with like the amount of butter that you can't even imagine. Just take that and just dump that on that guy's head. <laughs> oh, you went to a movie with him. Did he do it when you were there? Oh, totally did. Wasn't it gross? It wasn't as bad as you guys explained it to be, but it, it was pretty heavy. He was probably going going kind about it. He's trying to lure you in slowly, little by little, until he gets the liquid popcorn. All right, well, that's going to do it for this episode. We're going to come back next week. And again, you know, it, it depends on when we are able to watch the episode, how the episodes play out. But we will be back one way or the other. You'll you'll have some kind of episode by Sunday yes. of some sort. It might be a shorter instant take, and then we'll do the full episode like the Monday or Tuesday. But, you know, we'll see what happens. 
in terms of for now, we want to take a quick second to say thank you to all those that are supporting the show by going to P-A-T-R-E-O-N. That's patreon.com slash the blacklist uh, GSM. Interviews are posted there as well as the panel from C2E2 is on there. There's an after the panel special podcast that you can't get anywhere else. If we hit 500 bucks a month, we'll bring back the Blacklist Exposed apps. And if you can make it happen to 1000 a month in support, we will do this show live on camera. And I will uh, wear makeup. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I won't. Maybe I will. Every bit of support helps. We want to thank Doug for being our official Blacklister at the $50 level. And then Marilyn and Lacey as our syndicate members at the $25 level. Also, our task force members, Anja, Leone, Brandon, Jim, Lorelai, Carol, Stacy, and Florian. They are all at the $15 level. They all get awesome t-shirts and some cool swag. So make sure you check that out and get some for yourself. That's awesome, guys. Thank you. Also, shout out to Kathy, J, Michelle, Sherry, Lisa, Kevin, Paulette, Priscilla, Isabel, Richard, Nell, James, Judy, Rachel, Tony, and Sharon for being, ama- being amazing special agents for supporting us and the podcast. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash the blacklist GSM. Fill the fedora, get some awesome rewards, and we'll be back with Red's Rhetoric right after this. There's a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. Within that dimension is a new podcast from Golden Spiral Media dedicated to the Twilight Zone. Join me and Robert as we discuss the new series from CBS All Access and the original series we all love so much. It's called The Fifth Dimension. Subscribe today, wherever you listen to podcasts. Hi, it's Megan Boone, and you're listening to Blacklist Exposed on Golden Spiral Media. Welcome to Red's Rhetoric, that part of the show where we feature two great scenes from Red himself. Then you get to vote on the website over at theblacklistexposed.com for Anna McMahon. In order to cast your votes, it'll be fun. Go out there, do it, because it's a great time. First this week... Red visits a miracle worker. Elizabeth. Rahelio. I need to talk to him. What you need is gin to work your pressure points. Bronchitis, asthma, migraines. You've got a problem, reflexology will rubber right out of you. The man is a healer. The Grimms have the dossier, but they're on the run with it. We need Rahelio to help us find them. Oh. Sometime this year would be good. So be it, but when my sinusitis flares up, I'm blaming you. Secondly, Red explains the guilt one carries. Please tell me this makes sense to you. The president conspiring to kill himself? He took foreign money to get elected. If he did that, who knows what else he's done. Maybe people found out and the walls are closing in and he prefers to go out as a martyr to the cause. Many presidents only live for their legacy. Whatever the reason, he's carrying a heavy burden. People who kill themselves always are. Burdens they can't imagine ever being able to cast off. Are you talking about the president or my mother? Your mother was not as bad as... I understand why you might think she was, but she wasn't. She was a young woman trying to make sense of a world that was falling apart around her. She was on one side of an unbridgeable divide. Your father was on the other and you were in between. Over the years, your mother's legend has grown. Mythic spy, bloodless turncoat. In the process, people forgot the person behind the legend, but I haven't. If she were here, I'm sure she'd tell you she made so many mistakes. She was scared and uncertain and just trying to do the best she could. Which is your favorite? If you could use a good rubdown, vote hashtag red gin. Or if you understand Katarina's plight, vote hashtag red suicide. All right, now I move on to special agent intel. First up, we've got George Nauman. I wonder if Diaz thinks they are going to assassinate the first lady when really they plan to kill him. Oh, that's an interesting theory. 
theory. Monica said, well, it looks like Liz is going to go John McClane to save her fellow agents. <laughs> Only two things I'll bring up. First, now is the time for a body devil or a twin to come into play. Not red, but the president. Maybe mm. that's where the twin theory is going. Secondly, Katerina is sure talked about a lot. I am predicting an appearance by her in some form soon. It also looks like we'll have a rogue task force for next season. I'll just sit back and enjoy the ride next week. Um, I will have the same reaction to any kind of twin. I don't care who it is, <laughs> which is ah! just like that. <laughs> Deborah Jean, I'm not conflicted about killing you. I'm conflicted because I can't. That's from 620. Last and week. yep. And 621, your mother can't hurt you. So conflicted about killing you. I'm conflicted because I can't kill you. And then he says, your mother can't hurt you. Ah, I see parallel parallelism is what she's going for. Ah, I don't. I just see coincidence. But you see what you see. You see what you want to see, especially. Sure, sure. Uh, Lauren said, I love this episode. Annie McMahon is a great villain. I love mm. what Red said to Liz about Katarina. I am so happy that they are on good terms again. And Red was his usual chipper self. Well, that's because he went to the gin first. Uh, <laughs> when he drove up and saved Liz by shooting that bad agent. That was awesome. Yeah, I, I feel like it was a little quick, but I still liked it. Yeah, it looks like he just shows up out of nowhere during a firefight. Yeah. And can we can we agree? I think Anna McMahon has probably been one of the best villains since Kaplan, honestly. I, I just don't know why, but I really, really dig the way she's playing. Like, she's just chewing the scenery. And she just, she has a level of desperation because she, she realizes that Red is close to one-upping her. And she's just vindictive and willing to do anything. And I just, I just love that. I think she's playing the role great. I still have a hard time calling Kaplan a villain. I mean... Because she was right. She's the good person in the story. To a degree, but for our characters, or for our main character, she was a villain. Perspective, yes. But she was definitely in the right. Like, Red should have died. <laughs> <laughs> Red should have jumped off the bridge and done her a favor. I mean, the woman got shot in the face and lived. That's pretty impressive. It is. Nathan, holy moly, this episode was, and then fire emojis. I assume that means hot. Hot, 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 because there's three of them. That's true. It was intense. There was so much going on that I'm trying to catch my breath. I want to know how McMahon and Diaz turned the Secret Service into their own <laughs> stormtroopers without the Treasury Department. No, I seriously did not read this, so I didn't even know there was already a stormtrooper joke here, so I will retract mine. Without the Treasury Department knowing. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Does anyone think that Diaz's wife knows about the plot? It seems to me that Red revealed a bit of his knowledge and relationship with Katarina during his conversation with Liz about the tape that played in court. It makes me torn between Ilya or Katarina as Reddington theory. And how about that race to find the drive and the reveal of the conspiracy? I think my chin will be on the floor until next week. The season finale is going to be a gas. Until then, I'm on pins and needles. Uh, the whole Secret Service Stormtrooper thing, yeah, I don't... I feel like there's too many people involved <laughs> at this point. It's a little crazy because I know a lot of guys that work for the government and they take that seriously. So I guess the only thing I could say is if they were convinced this was for the better um, betterment of the country, maybe, but torturing and killing a mailman would never fall under their purview. So that is a little surprising to me too. I mean, unless it's a different kind of secret service because of everything that's happened in the world since nine 11. Sure, I guess. I mean, I mean, have you ever ran into a Secret Service person? Do you want to run into a Secret Service person? <laughs> I have ran into a Secret Service person. And I can't imagine them killing a mailman. I just, I mean, that's the guy that makes sure we get our bills. Did he, you know, did he end up dying? Important member. Did he, there's no way he lived because otherwise he could be, he would absolutely be the guy that would tell them. I mean, I guess he could have. I didn't see him die, I don't think. I was trying to remember if he got shot in the crossfire because they were still looking through the letters when the FBI showed up, where the FBI showed up. The, I don't think he lived. Up. I don't think he lived because they, they couldn't let him live. If if he lived, he could 100% say Secret Service was dirty. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe next week we'll find out if he's alive or dead. I don't know. Or I should probably rewatch it and see if I see a bullet hole on his head. I was just worried for the poor guy being blind. That's all. Oh. Sharon said the plot is to assassinate the president, but Diaz is in on it. What if during the attempt, the first lady is killed and not the president? Maybe that's the actual plot. Maybe the first lady wants a divorce and that would ruin his reelection bid. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a hard way to get out of it. I just, I just want you to kill me. Yeah. I just, I'm so sick of dealing with lawyers. They are exhausting. Yolanda Pasca, the president's wife is Katerina. You know, I, I 
pondered that idea only because I feel like maybe his wife is part of the cabal because of the fact that she seemed like she's in on it. So I definitely think she's probably part of the cabal or a foreign organization of some sort. But she'd have to be 60 and I don't, the woman didn't look 60 to me. Plus she's very tall. She clearly does not have the same structure as a lot of her beak. <laughs> well, they don't, they don't have to be a perfect fit, especially if you want your theory to come true. They definitely don't have to have a perfect fit. Sorry, that was me just poking fun. Huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- that's, that's the hard part about the show now. Now that they've introduced the anybody could be anybody because we have all these people that can change you up. I mean, that's the first thing you can be like, oh, that person might be this person. Oh, that person might be that person. So rather than just taking it at face value. I will tell you, if anybody pops up on screen and they're called Katarina or if it's implied that they're Katarina, I'm going to take them at face value. I'm not going to, well, that's probably a DNA switch and a facial reconstruction. And it's not really, but I'm not doing that. My head would explode and I'd, I'd be too angry. I think conversations like this are how we tell everybody it's time to end the mythology <laughs> of the show. <laughs> or at least an, an aspect of it. I yeah. don't think the, the whole mythology, but an aspect but, but, of it, but, yes. but a clear, a clear answer. A clear path, for in, sure. In black and white type on paper that can't be redacted. <laughs> uh, Nineveh, uh, n- a new writer in, said, Such a great ep. The only way I see them getting out of this one is if Aram or the task force thought fast enough to send the contents of the dossier to Diaz's opponent and not the vice president. Also, Red's drive-by was epic. That's the one thing I was shouting when I was watching the scene is, why is Ram? Why is Ram sitting there looking dumbfounded at all the information? Why isn't he he putting it in a Google Drive or something where it's not right there at the post office? So they have the information offsite. That should have been done immediately. That's the first thing I would have done. And I'm not Ram. Well, you don't. <laughs> so, you don't know that he didn't do that before. I don't. I don't. I don't. But I'm. I didn't see him do anything, and I'm just like I was yelling at my screen, like you need to put that offsite. We all know what's going to happen. We've all you've watched TV around. I know you have, so you need to take all that and put it offsite immediately. I think that's going to do it for this episode, man. I think we're uh, we're ready for the finale. Yeah. 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 For sure. Are you excited? Any any big uh, theories going into the final stretch? Uh, my big theory is that whatever we find out, it's going to be a cliffhanger. I think we're not going to get a definitive anything. It's going to be like a, and then we're going to cut to black. Yeah, probably a cliffhanger. That's what we usually do. But I hope it's definitely a jaw dropper. Well, it's not what we usually do. I mean, usually there's like a, a definitive answer and then we roll into the next whatever big bad is. It's kind of like a, a setup for whatever the next season will be. Like oh, this, there's the, always a this jaw one I truly feel it's going to be like, like the resident. The resident this week was like, uh, heart monitor beep 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 and then they don't show you who's the person that actually died and it was like oh my god like i gotta <laughs> wait till september for the answer but i think it's gonna be one of those situations since they knew they got six and seven at the same time they were able to oh, write into sh- it and we should plug right now there will be an interview upcoming if schedules work out with uh john boca camp after the finale so yes, yes. don't uh, unsubscribe or anything just keep keep your ears peeled it will be out there sooner than you think all right, well, that's going to conclude this episode. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at the Blacklist GSM, where we live tweet during the East Coast feed when possible, and we use the show's hashtag the Blacklist. Don't forget to follow us on Tumblr, Instagram, and join the Facebook group. Just search for the Blacklist Exposed. Talk about the show, the podcast, or recommend your favorite hacker friend. Big thanks for listening. Remember to try to re- be respectful to your fellow fans. Don't and and I do want to say whatever happens next week. Always remember we're all fans of the One same show. Community. Don't forget to answer a profiling question, though. How can the POTUS kill the POTUS? Because that don't make no damn sense. We'll see you next week, guys. Take care. Until next time, I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. That's at Troy Heinrichs on Twitter. And if you want to learn more about me, just visit, well, about.me slash Troy Heinrichs. And I'm Agent Aaron Peterson. You can hear me talking about movies and TV on the Hollywood Outsider podcast, as well as remake this movie right. We are available at thehollywoodoutsider.com or on Twitter at popcorn be sure to subscribe download the app submit your feedback but most importantly keep yourself off of the the blacklist the blacklist exposed is a golden spiral media production find more of our great podcasts at goldenspiralmedia.com slash podcasts